united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning, everybody. It's with such great joy that we are here this morning, mid-Monday morning, to just greet you. I'm the senior pastor, Susano Crew, Jr. of El Paso First Assembly, and I'm your host today for your show, United with Christ. We know yesterday was Father's Day, but we're having a special show. I still want to continue to minister to some fathers, and I have a word for every father that's out there. So I encourage you this morning, call a father, maybe record the show, let them know an uncle, uh, anybody, a grandpa that may be able to watch God has has a special thing for you this morning and so we're so excited the word of the Lord says in Psalms 127 that children are an inheritance are a heritage from God and so I thought it'd be fit fitting on this Father's Day show uh, that I'm going to bring to you I brought my sons with me I'm so excited to have them here on the show I also brought my daughter here that would be here to sing a song as well so it's going to be a great Father's Day show here on United with Christ so I'm so excited our phone lines are open so I encourage you to call in on the number on your screen to that phone prayer line we do have ministry workers available, ready to take your call. So as you call in, they're ready to receive it, to come in agreement and pray. So we're going to have a wonderful show this morning, and I'm excited. And so God's going to have some good things in store for us this morning. And so I just want my sons to be able to introduce themselves and uh, greet everybody today. Hello, everybody. My name is Isaiah Carrillo. Good morning, everybody. My name is Isra Carrillo. And I'm so excited to have my sons here. They are the strength of my right hand. I put them in tension on my right hand because I know that everything that God will build ministry-wise or even just as a father, that our children would rise up and take that lead eventually when it's their time. And so I'm so excited for what God has for us. So we're going to pray this morning. We're going to lay some foundation as God to be with us as we get ready to have a fantastic show. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word that never returns void, but accomplishes all that you set it out to do. I thank you, God, for every viewer, every person that's watching this morning, Father God. I would pray, God, that you would just touch them, Holy Spirit, with your awesome presence. I pray that this word would draw near us near to God in every way, shape, and form. I pray, God, that you would be, we would be transformed, Father God, by the renewing of our mind. And I thank you for all that you're doing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So I encourage you, call some friends. Tune into this show. Get ready to let them know that God's going to do something great. And we're going to get ready to lay it in foundation and some praise. We always got to give God some praise. And one of the things that we want to do this morning, as I brought my daughter and, and our uh, lead guitarist from El Paso First Assembly to sing this wonderful song, I know you're going to be blessed this morning here on United with Christ. Oh 
salvation and he is our prize drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes if grace is an ocean we're all sinking cause heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss and my heart turns violently inside of my chest and I don't Amen. Thank you guys so much for that. That is just the glimpse of a perfect heavenly father that loves us with such an unconditional love. And so, yes, he does love us. And I'm so thankful for that song. I thank my daughter for coming out on the show and helping me and my sons. I just thank them. I'm so proud of them. And just a word out to my other daughter, Monique. I love you, kid, and, and I miss you. And so this morning, I just wanted to talk about fatherhood. I'm sorry I get choked up when I talk about my kids. I want to talk about fatherhood and the importance of fatherhood it, it is such a an important thing in our lives and I know we just celebrated uh, Father's Day and and uh, and I'm so thankful for the men that have stuck around and the men that are there in our lives but I just wanted to draw some things uh, to our hearts because I, I just believe that there is uh, a lot of ministry that fathers have inside of them and the effects that it is for our children the word of the Lord says in Proverbs 22 verse 6 it says to train up a child in a way that he should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's a key scripture that we read, and I know we've read it many times in church. What does that really mean to us, dads? And, and I really want to minister to every dad and every uncle and every grandfather and every man that is a mentor in some child's kind of way. The Bible calls us to train up. This is not a once in a lifetime, just one time process. This is a process that is enduring. You train up and you raise up and it's something that goes on and on. The effects of not having fathers are devastating across the board. Uh, despite any type of religion or any other type of background, just in children in general. I want to read some things that I was getting from the National Fatherhood Initiative that really uh, have stirred in me and, and really in our church uh, at El Paso First Assembly. We really want to minister to the men to get healthy men to be able to have healthy homes. And when we have healthy homes, we're going to have healthy wives and healthy children. And we're going to be able to make a difference in this world. When I look at these stats and I'm reminded by numbers, one of the things, I'm a numbers guy. Numbers don't lie. If you have $5 in the bank, that's what you have. You cannot make bigger expenses or go try to uh, buy more than what you have because numbers do not lie. I wanted to show you some numbers that I, I believe are, are, are vital keys in, 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 in our lives that we may not be aware of. But from uh, the National Father Initiative, there is a father factor that comes into play. What is a father factor? Let me tell you that there are 24 million children that are being raised in the home without their biological father present. That's one out of every three children that you see in this entire uh, United States of America. You are seeing them being raised without their biological father. And so that is a true th uh, seed that, that is being planted. And then we're not, we're not reaping what we need to. We're reaping devastation. Why? Because the father is supposed to be there for the lifetime of the child. Things happen in marriages or things may go on, but it, just because you may not be um, present, you can still be there uh, helping your child, being there to pray and raise them up in the way that God would want them to be. Let me read you some stats because uh, what does all this mean, the father factor, that we are at risk, our generations are at risk of uh, truly, truly devastation hitting, and we're already seeing these numbers. I'm going to read some of them to you. In these 24 million kids that are raising up without their biological father at home, that's the father factor. These are the results that are already hitting us and that we can see. Kids that don't have their father living at home with them, their biological father, are four times more likely to live in poverty. They are more likely to suffer, suffer emotional and behavioral problems. 
these kids are more likely headed to go to prison. I want to read a stat to you that of the men that are in prison, over 80% of them have one thing in common. They don't have a father at home. Of all the incarcerated men in the United States have that common denominator, no dad in the home. And so they're more likely to commit a crime when there's no father in the home. They're seven times, our girls are seven times more likely to become pregnant as a teenager when there is no father present in the home. They are more likely to become addicted or to use alcohol at some point in time of their teenage life when there's no father at home. They're two times more likely to drop out of school when there's no father at home. And I wanted to read you a, 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 a statement that's alarming. 70% of all teen suicides have one common denominator. There's no father in the home. So it speaks for themselves. It speaks for themselves when there's no father present or living at home. Fathers are very important. And I wanted just to read some things because we have as ability dads, fathers, mentors. We have that anointing to call out our children who they truly are. We are, have the ability to call out what God has placed in them. And as fathers, it is our job and our responsibility to call out all that God has placed within our kids. I want to read you something in Genesis 35 verse 16. And they journeyed. Who was they? It was uh, Jacob and Rachel. They journeyed from Bethel. And there was, they were a little way off from coming to Ephrath. And Rachel travailed. And she had some hard labor. And it came to pass that when she was in hard labor, that the midwife told her, Fear not, because you're going to have this child. You're going to have this son. And it came to pass that her soul was in departing. Why? Because she died. And when right before she died, she called her son Benoni. But his father called him Benjamin. I want to stop right there because there's some key dynamic there. Rachel was calling her son Benoni. Ben is son, meaning in the Hebrew son. Benoni is sorrow because she was dying at that moment. She wanted to name him son of her sorrow. But her, his father transformed that. And he said, no, you're going to be Benjamin. Ben, son of my right hand, son of my strength. He renamed him and he said, no, you're going to be Benjamin. Many times we... Our mothers do the best that they can, and I commend all their mothers, but the father is the one who calls out the true identity of his children. Just like Jacob, God calls out the true identity in our lives. God calls out who you really are. No one has the power or the authorities to say, hey, you're never going to amount to much, or hey, you're a loser, or you'll never do good in school, and they'll tell you all kinds of things. Nobody has that authority. Because they didn't create you. Only God calls out who you are. And God has placed our fathers there to call out that purpose and that destiny in your life. And sometimes your dad will call out something that isn't though as it is. And I want to read in Judges chapter 6 verse 11 and 12. We're seeing a glimpse of that. The angel of the Lord shows up and he sat under the oak tree in Oprah. And he was right there and the son Gideon was trashing wheat by the wine press, and he was hiding from the Midianites. Gideon was hiding during a time where the Midianites were coming to take over, and he was in fear hiding. The Lord found him. Aren't you thankful that no matter what's going on in your life, the Lord will find you? The Lord will be right there. It doesn't matter. You can't hide from God. And he was right there, and the angel of the Lord spoke, and he said, appeared unto Gideon and told him, The Lord is with you. <laughs> the Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. And he said to him, My Lord... He said to you're a mighty man of valor. And he said, my Lord, me, where am I to save Israel? How can I do this? He's, and this is Gideon talking. My family is poor in Manasseh. I am the least in my father's house. God showed up and said, look, Gideon, I know you're hiding, but you're a mighty man of valor. God's going to use you to destroy the Midianites. Gideon was surprised and said, me, I'm the least of my family. I'm the least. We're the least tribe and I'm the least in my home. How can it be me? But God was calling something out, though that it was, even though it was not yet. And so that's what fathers have the ability to do, call out that winner, that champion in you. We have that calling out anointing. I'm going to share a story with you that really touched my heart growing up. It was when I was playing middle school football. And uh, I remember that the first, uh, first time I ever played football, I was afraid. I was just happy to be on that team. I was just happy to be part of that team. But my dad would show up and he'd show up to every practice and he'd be showing up to every game. And after the second, third game of the year, I hadn't played. I hadn't gotten any opportunity to play. And he told me, son, what's going on? I believe you're one of the best uh, running backs out there. And I said, dad, um, you know, the guys out there are good. The coach knows what he's doing. And my dad went and talked to the coach. 
And he told him, my son is, is a great running back. He can run this ball. He can do some great things. And he spoke to my coach. And I remember that day so clearly because the coach had a meeting. And he said, you know what? We, um, we're going to go ahead and, and not start our normal uh, starter at the running back position. We're going to start Susano in that place because his dad believes that he's a better running back than the starter. I remember I was sweating. I was nervous. I was just, I, my dad had put me on the spot. But what was my dad doing? He was seeing a potential in me that I couldn't even see in myself. He was seeing something in me that I didn't even know was there. I remember the next Saturday was that opportunity and that time and, and the coach started me. And the very first time I touched the ball, I broke away for 60 yards. And I remember as I cut to the side and I was running down that sideline, I saw my dad looking at me, jogging down that sideline with me. And I saw in his face the joy and the gleam only that a father can have. After that a game, I remember sitting in the bus and uh, they named me that the most valuable player for that game. And they were chanting my name on that bus. That as a sixth grader changed my life. I really didn't feel a whole lot. I had a real low self-esteem, but it changed everything because I knew that there was something more within me that my dad saw. And I was really nervous. And to be honest, I was angry at my dad for putting me in that position. But later on, I thanked him because I never Never did not start that year again. I had that starting position. Why? Because my dad saw something that was far greater in me that nobody could ever see, not even myself. And so our fathers have that ability, that calling out ability. And so we need to be there, fathers. We need to step up and be involved in our lives. Ephesians 6, chapter 4 says, fathers, don't exasperate your children. Don't frustrate them. Bring them up in training and instruction of the Lord. Bring them up. We are not just to bring them up for a season, not just when they're small. I'm telling you, I'm, for, I'm going to be 40 years old this year, and there's not a day still in moments that I don't need my father. There's moments where I will call him and I'll ask for his counsel. There's times where I'll just say, Dad, I'm going through this tough season. There's never come a time in, in any man's life that he'll stop needing his father. And so this, is, this training and this instruction doesn't just stop. It's just not for a couple of years but it is for a lifetime that we are called. And so we have such a great impact, fathers. And we're seen by the numbers and the father factor that children are hurting because the dads don't come together. You may be in a place and say, hey, I don't even have a dad present in my life. But you know what? God is there. Get into a good church where the men can mentor some of the kids and the pastor can plug you in and, 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 and get that discipleship that is needed. But it's a process of bringing up. This process does not end. One of the things that I tell our church and we read in Hosea chapter four, verse six, the Bible says, my people, God's people are destroyed for the knack of knowledge because you've rejected knowledge. Sometimes we reject the knowledge. Sometimes we reject things in our lives. How do we reject knowledge? Let me tell you, the Bible says without vision, the people perish. When you have vision, you see something in greater revelation. When you have bad eyesight, you can't see things in detail. But I remember the time I got my glasses and I could see there was more revelation. I can see things. They were revealed to me. Why? Because my vision was cleared. And that revelation brings a manifestation of what I'm seeing. How many know that as fathers, we have to instruct and bring that revelation to our children? I know what you're saying, Dad, to me. I know you're saying sometimes I try to tell my kids what to do and I try to guide them. They don't want to hear it. But the word of the Lord says, train up a child in the way that they should go. They may not be going there, dad, but you do your job. You train them up the way that they should go. And the Bible promises that when they grow old, they will not depart from it. God's word never returns void, but accomplishes all that he sets out to do. So I'm telling you that even though you may not see it, that's why the Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. And so there may be times we don't see what we've been instilling in our children, but it's there. The seed of God is there. And so we need to instruct them. We need to guide them and know they may say, I don't want to hear it. That's OK. My job is to train and the training process never ends. And it's a difficult process. It's telling them the weak points. It's telling them what they need to work on. It's even praying for them. Fathers, you have a power and anointing. You are the priest of your home to pray for your kids when they're asleep, to put hands over them and anoint them and pray. That is your house. And the enemy cannot come in and steal what he wants to from your home. And so we need to be able to love our children and raise them up. I want to read a, a scripture that stirred in me when I was uh, doing a series for our men. It was Judges chapter 2, verse 10, and it reads this way. And after that whole generation had gathered 
to their ancestors. Another generation grew up who neither knew the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. They forsook the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped different various gods of peoples around them. They aroused the Lord's anger. Now, I want to tell you, in that book, in Judges, there's a powerful statement. There was a generation that rose up that didn't know the Lord. There was a generation that rose up that didn't know the great things of what God has done. And I want to ask you a very important question. Whose responsibility and whose fault was it? I'm going to tell you, fathers, it's their responsibility. It's our responsibility. It was the father's fault for not instructing that child. A generation grew up without knowing anything of God. God had done some great things for that nation. God had delivered them into the promised land. God had delivered their ancestors and their forefathers from Egypt. God had done some great mighty things, parted the Red Sea. God had given them provision, manna from heaven. But a generation grew up that did not know. They did not have that vision. Why? Because it wasn't revealed to them by their fathers. We're seeing a glimpse of that in America today. Fathers, we got to be that voice of God. We got to be that voice in the desert proclaiming who our children are, calling them out. I'm telling you, we are in a generation where our kids are identified by social media. We're in a generation where Instagram and Twitter and all these kinds of social medias are being used to identify our kids. And they get their validation from people that say this and say that about them. There's more things that I thought I would never see, but I have seen more teenagers being bullied by the internet and even teenagers that have committed their li uh, committed suicide taking their lives because they were being bullied why because the world is labeling our kids and they're seeking identity from somewhere girls in the teenage pregnancy is at the highest that it's ever been why because they're seeking love and acceptance from men from the male figure in all the wrong places dads we got to put back in our kids in our daughters that validation, that of who they are in Christ. They are great kids and they are champions. One of the greatest moments that, and my son is here in the studio, but one of the greatest moments, and he could tell you that the first time he scored a touchdown, I was in tears. Why was I in tears? Because there was a time in, in my son's life when he was playing that, that, you know, he wasn't getting the opportunities. I didn't even go talk to the coach. I went to my son and I told him, son, I know you are far able to score and do far more better than your dad ever was. And he did. That first time he crossed that line, I knew he had it in him to be that champion and make that touchdown. It touched and blessed my life. This year, my, my son scored about eight, nine touchdowns. He scored in this first year more than I've ever scored in my middle school career. And I'm so happy for him. I'm not, oh, my son. I want my son to be far better than what I ever was. But there is a generation that is rising up that don't know. The Bible says, Joshua 24, Joshua is telling, if it's serving the Lord is undesirable to you, choose you this day whom you will serve. He gave the people a charge and they said, we will serve the Lord. But they drifted from that. They drifted from serving God. And then a generation after that promise of we will serve, they rose up a generation that didn't know the Lord. And so we need to be able to be there to carry out the word that God has called us. But fathers, can we make a difference? Absolutely, because God has given us a promise. I want to pray with you. I have some closing time uh, this, this uh, morning, and I want to pray um, with you because I believe that there's an anointing. We serve a God of restoration, a God of reconciliation. And God has given us a promise. I want to tell you, Dad. I want to tell you, Grandfather. I want to tell you, Uncle, whoever is watching this show, even mothers that have had to be a dad, you have a promise in God, and God's promises don't expire. Malachi 4, 6 says, God will turn the hearts of the parents to their children. You may say, I want to be a good dad. I just don't have time or I don't know how. Sometimes that's the occasion. I know because my dad, his father, wasn't much of a dad that influenced him in the right way, in positive ways. But when my dad received Christ, he turned that over. One thing that I can say, did I have the perfect dad? No. Am I the perfect dad? No. But what did my dad leave to me? My dad left the reverence and the respect and he trained me up in the ways of God. And I stand here before you today because a father's seated in me. You may not have a dad that's seating in you, but God gives us a promise that he will turn the parents to their children, their hearts. But he also says that he will turn the hearts of the children to the parents and that God will restore our 
land. We serve a God of restoration. So today, you may be here and you may be hurting because a dad may have left. You may be hurting because you don't have a dad. You may be a dad hurting because your child has left. Just remember like the prodigal father, with the prodigal son, there was that father that was there at the end. That son had a come to moment. He came to his senses and when he came to his senses, he ran home and his father met him with open arms. That's how God is to us with his open arms. But what happens, fathers, when our kids have that come to their senses moments and they run and there's no father there? We need to be there for our kids because that word of God will click at them at the right time and it will turn them back to us. So I want to pray today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Thank you for every family, every father out there in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would give him wisdom, that you would give him discernment, that you would give him all that he needs to draw from you, God, as being a dad and being a father and a nurturer and instructing his kids. I pray that we would do it with fear and trembling before you, God. I pray that you would bring that spirit of restoration and reconciliation to homes. I pray that men would arise. Fathers would step into that call and that purpose and destiny for our children. I pray that we would see a turnaround in our children, in our homes, and in our families, in our cities, and in our country, Father God, that men would step into that place. I pray that no weapon formed against fathers would prosper and no tongue rise against them will stand. I pray that there would be an anointing that breaks every yoke and brings back fathers to children and children back to their fathers and that fathers would have that anointing to call forth and speak into the, their sons and daughters' lives. We call this in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I, I continue to tell you to call in. There's people that are there ready to help you and pray and come in agreement with you. God wants to do some things in your life. It is such a privilege, fathers, to minister to you. Yes, we want to be celebrated, but we want to step into the role and the purpose and the plan and the destiny. And on your screen, um, I want to just tell a little bit about our church. I'm the senior pastor at El Paso First Assembly, 3928 Montana. You can check us out on our website at www.elpasofirst.com. We do have services Sunday at 1030 a.m., Wednesdays at 7. We do have nursery and a Spanish translation available for all those that don't understand uh, English. You can now have that translation available for you. It is such a privilege and an honor to come into your home. Each and every Monday, I want to thank KSEE, everybody that makes this show available. I call you, to, uh, I tell you to come in uh, and, and donate to the station that has make it possible. It's a privilege and an honor. Dads, let's step up. Let's change our hearts and let's change our families for the glory of God. Thank you. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSCE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903, or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.